Dr. Sumitra, we welcome you to the Connected Speakers event of ISD Qatar and we really want first to know about throwing sheep in the boardroom, how the idea came to you and why did the, you chose the name for the book. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. The idea is something which is a very topical one. As uh, you know and as we all know today, technology is having a very big impact on the world around us and certainly social media is one of the biggest movements in technology. So what we decided to study was we decided to look at the impact of how social media interacts with organizations. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to pick images from these two or different worlds. So throwing sheep is an application on Facebook. So you can throw a sheep at someone. It's a playful gesture mm -hmm. to get someone's attention. Mm -hmm. And we took the boardroom as an image of the classical vertical organization. Mm -hmm. So we brought the two things together. Mm -hmm. Throwing sheep in the boardroom mm -hmm. is our playful gesture at organizations to tell them, well, look, something is happening out here and you better take attention and you know, take note of what is happening mm -hmm. and such that you're able to use it for effectively for your own corporate purposes. So which audiences did you write the book for? This is a book which has been written for all a wide range of audience. Uh, it applies and is very useful for business executives. Mm -hmm. It is also very useful for educated citizens, mm -hmm. both young and old, mm -hmm. because one of the basic premises of the book is it is applicable. The change is applicable to everyone mm -hmm. around us. Status, power, and identity are the kind of a backbone for the book. So why did you choose these, these three topics and how do social networks relate to them? Well, you know, identity, status, and power are three very fundamental elements of how we as individuals represent us to the world around them, how we interact with each other, and how we choose to influence others. So identity is my representation or our representation of each one of us to the world around us. Status is how we seek recognition from the world around us, because all of us want some recognition from people around us, social capital. And power ultimately is about how you exercise influence, how you get others to do things that you like them to do. Mm -hmm. So these three dimensions, in our view, represent three very core elements mm -hmm. of how people think of themselves, mm -hmm. how people relate to each other, mm -hmm. and how people work with each other. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we chose three different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, in these three dimensions reflect some basic characteristics of human behavior. You mentioned that uh, some organizations are kind of reluctant to use Web 2.0 in, in the workplace. So why do you think this reluctance is taking place? Well, partly because a lot of uh, organizations don't fully understand the power of Web 2.0 networks. And I think that's something which will probably change and evolve over time. But today, in general, a lot of organizations are struggling to understand what this technology is. Is it something which is just meant for the younger generation or is it something which has a true impact in the business point of view? Mm -hmm. And the reality is that because the impact is so fundamental, mm -hmm. it impacts on how people relate to each other, how they work with each other, it has a very fundamental impact on organizations. With Generation V entering the workforce, how do you think social media can change the relationship between the employee, the manager and the organization, if any? Well, you know, Generation V is a very interesting phenomena happening in organizations because it is not just a question of difference in values, mm -hmm. it's a question of difference in expectations. Mm -hmm. A lot of the younger people who are entering the workforce, they are used to a world which is much more global, mm -hmm. much more open, much more transparent, and much more interactive. They want to be able to participate, to give their views. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these basic principles have to be transferred to the working world. And that's not always easy because a lot of the principles in the working world and many organizations are not completely aligned to these basic principles. Mm -hmm. So what has to happen is there has to be a realignment of some of the organization's mm -hmm. basic along these newer set of values of the Generation V. Plus, at the same time, what has to happen is we have to be able to use the power of Generation V to be able to involve them in redesigning some of our own processes and some of our own structure and systems. So what I suggest to organizations often is, why don't you start some mentorship programs in which you have the younger people 
mentoring the older senior colleagues in some critical areas of technology. And it's a great process because the younger people also learn from the older colleagues in the process. In the beginning of the book, you spoke of false identities being created on social media. So can you elaborate on that? Well, you know, social media have much more degrees of freedom. If you go into a real-world organization, there are usually fairly well-defined norms and guidelines about the way you dress, about the way you talk, the way you represent yourself. And because social media are, in general, a new phenomena, there are much less well-defined norms and guidelines. Mm -hmm. Now, as a result, what is happening is people are creating different profile, different identities for themselves. Mm -hmm. And someone, sometimes the identities can be false, can be deceptive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the danger because there is no way to easily guard against the creation of these false identities. Mm -hmm. So that can, in some cases, lead to in some extreme cases, some teenagers committing suicide, mm -hmm. or in other normal cases, teenagers, people getting deceived by others. Mm -hmm. And that is the very undesirable impact of these social networks. So the ITU theme for this year is cyber safety. So how do you think uh, social networks affect uh, youth safety online, if any? Well, I think so, social networks introduce another dimension on which youth have to be much more careful mm -hmm. and much more wary about cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I think there's a urgent demand for introducing more education in schools and universities about how can the young and the young adults use these technologies. Mm -hmm. People have to be educated about what is the impact of these technologies, mm -hmm. what is or what are some of the consequences of exposing some of your private details on these mm -hmm. internet platforms mm -hmm. and even simple elements of how long do these profiles live, how can you use information mm -hmm. are important elements which have to be taught. Mm -hmm. Technology is often organization and neutral. So it has to be used either in a positive way or negative way. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to educate our young and also our older mm -hmm. citizens parents, teachers, to be able to work together to use this technology in the right manner. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, in your book, you mentioned that Web 2.0 will bring along Markets 2.0, Enterprise 2.0, and Democracy 2.0. So what are these uh, versions? of? Well, what we tried to argue for in the book was, because the impact is so widespread, these technologies will impact almost every aspect of our society. So clearly, the way we work and live in organizations is going to get impacted. And that is really, in a sense, what is happening in terms of Enterprise 2.0 and Markets 2.0. Uh, the way you're able to engage with a number of people inside the corporation, IBM, for example, redefine the values of the company. They involve more than 80,000 people across the company using these online social media platforms. So you're able to do things differently, and that is creating your enterprise 2.0, either internally or even externally with customers. You're able to interact with customers much more. And the same is true for societies, and that's one reason why we say democracy 2.0, because you'll find that citizens are much more able and willing to participate and give the ideas and to be able to contribute to society. Mm -hmm. So fundamentally, the impact is something which transcends all aspects of how we organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, one booming phenomenon is Wikipedia. Why do you think this Wikipedia exactly is uh, really successful nowadays? It's a, it's a fantastic success story of how people, normal citizens, can come together to create an incredibly useful source of common knowledge. And there are studies done about why do people contribute to Wikipedia. And what is interesting is the number one reason why people contribute to Wikipedia is because they believe it's fun. People like to share. It is as simple as that. Now, another additional fact which is becoming more important is all of us have something valuable to share. So it is not that knowledge is localized in a few experts. Mm -hmm. All of us have our own unique contributions and a knowledge source, a knowledge base like Wikipedia gives us that opportunity to each one of us to be able to contribute. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why it is a powerful.
So final question, what do you think social media will be like in the future? How do you envision social media in the next 10 years? If you look at technology which have succeeded over the last several years, it is almost always the case that technologies that have enabled people to share have been the one which is most successful. Okay, Things like uh, television, uh, telephone, cell phone, and now, of course, social media, whatever enables greater participation, greater sharing, are, have been successful. So clearly what I envisage happening is, over the next few years, people will be able to contribute much more. People will be able to participate much more, be it in society, be it in governments, be it in the organizations in which they work. So you will hear the voice of the individual much more. And that is a great strength. So the challenge for us is to be able to benefit from the power of individuals. And because this is a global phenomena, you have individuals around the world. So even if you're in Qatar, you can benefit from expertise from people in China or in Brazil. And think of the power of that. How are you, I mean, how can you leverage this global power of individuals, creative individuals around the world? And that is the beautiful and the exciting part of the future. Dr. Sumita, thank you so much for this lovely interview and we'll be looking forward for your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.